Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Ransom Notes. I'm Taylor Ransom. Major, major news day today. We're going to be talking about Lieutenant Dan. I don't know if you guys have seen this man, but he's an incredible specimen. He has one foot. He has a boat. It's been docked on the dock of Florida. He said he was going to ride out the hurricane in his boat. The Internet descended upon him, made him a celebrity, and then he crashed and burned his own career. Within about two weeks, it happens. It happens to the best of us, okay? We're going to talk about the Tesla robots, which I think will be soon seen at your local mega church. I think they're going to replace interns very quickly. I'm going to a daddy's house church anyway. SpaceX um, launched a rocket. They sent it to space, brought it back in parallel park. They basically took a skyscraper. They made it be able to go through the atmosphere, then come back without destroying and parallel park on a post, like on a big pole, and it was incredible. Um, Kamala Harris um, did the thing we all did when we were writing college essays back in the day, and she plagiarized her book. She plagiarized it by lifting an entire section out of Wikipedia. There were 11 other instances of, of plagiar plagiarizing. Um, very, very cutesy, very demure. Um, we're going to talk about that. Um, before we get into all that, I will ask you, if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you like this show, click the bell notification. If you're on podcast or Spotify, please follow. Okay. And if you're on a podcast platform, you might as well leave a five-star review because every time you do, my mother calls me and she tells me how proud she is of me. It makes me feel good. So go ahead and leave a rating for me. All right. I appreciate it very much. You guys should probably know, you know, what's going on. What is going on? It's a question I ask myself very frequently in Franklin, Tennessee. I don't want to talk about Franklin too much on this show, but it's an interesting place, okay? I live in the Christian influencer Mecca of Franklin, Tennessee. You go to the factory and you're outside Honest Coffee and you see Michael Tate and you see all of the CCM artists. You know, it's really interesting because I'll be in line for coffee and in front of me, you know, there's like a pack, just like a wild pack of transplanted white girls um, from the West Coast trying to hide their Valley Girl accent. They're wearing white cowgirl boots. They don't have a single scuff. They've never seen a farm. They don't know what a farm is. The farm is something that they used to watch, you know, on, on TV, on PBS as a kid, and that's what they think of as a farm. They've never seen one. They're wearing their cowgirl boots. They're doing their thing. I love it for them. I'm glad they're having fun. It's just the conversations are interesting to overhear. You know, and then you see the CCM artists doing work, okay? They're doing work in the coffee shops. Let's be honest, none of us actually do any work, okay? Do I do any work? I don't even know at this point. I don't know what my job is at this point, okay? I dress up in funny costumes, and I record skits that I post on the internet. And then I do things like this show, you know, where I basically just yap, you know? I just yap. I'm a Division One yapper. And, you know, that's a good time. But, you know, you see the CCM artists and Honest Coffee, they're replying to emails. You know, they're basically assembling the Avengers to try to write a song. And it, most of the time, a lot of times it doesn't even still end up on the charts. OK, I mean, they literally want to be like Jesus. They want to be like Jesus so badly that they're assembling 12 writers for their worship song. Like Jesus assembled the 12 disciples. Um, you know, it's a fun time, okay? I want DC Talk to get back together. That's what I want. I want to walk into Honest Coffee one week and see the members of DC Talk just sitting around a table. I won't even say anything to them. I'll just be happy about it. Um, but, you know, that's tough because of Kevin Max's tweets. You know, he likes to tweet sometimes, and sometimes it involves the devil's lettuce. And so that's kind of, you know, I don't know how that works with DC Talk. I don't know. I haven't checked on all that in a while, okay? Don't hold me to that. I haven't checked in. That's just the last time I checked in. Maybe, I don't know, maybe there's been some turnaround since then. But, you know, that's Franklin, Tennessee for you, okay? That's where I live. That's where I currently live. And we're all just trying to get through this as a country. There are, you know, worse situations. I will say that um, my prayers go out to anyone affected by the hurricanes. I'm glad that the hurricane that went off the coast of Florida. It got downgraded to a cat too. I'm glad that it wasn't as bad as people thought it was. I hope that um, you all are doing okay. Um, you know, it's it's a tough situation. Um, but, you know, I'm grateful that my worst situation is hearing CCM artists argue in coffee shops in Franklin, Tennessee. Okay. I don't have it that bad. Don't feel that sorry for me. Um, if you want to get more in, <laughs> if you want to get more info about my personal life, 
Um, apparently people want that. You guys can check out Ransom Society, by the way. Link is in description. You get this show a day early. Um, you also get it without ads. We're going to be joining a great podcast network soon. Very excited to talk with you all about that. Um, and you're going to get more stuff from me, okay? I'm going to put out a video on there today, actually. Um, stuff that people aren't going to be able to get anywhere else. Um, and so that's exciting. Check that out. Well, we have some great news. We have a very busy news day. We're going to talk about Lieutenant Dan. Okay, I want to paint a picture for you. Lieutenant Dan is a man with one foot. He has one foot. Where What happened to the other foot? I have no idea. I don't know the lore. I looked through the videos, but I don't see any lore about the foot. Okay, he's missing a foot. He has a boat. He's off the coast of Florida. He's deciding he's going to ride out the hurricane. Thank God it wasn't as bad as everyone thought. He was going to ride it out because his logic was... If the boat is on the water, it'll just rise above the storm, okay? There's something kind of poetic about that. It's homeschooler math. That's not really how things work, but it's poetic. Let's go ahead and just roll that first clip of uh, Lieutenant Dan. All right, Dan, the people that are new, explain to them why you're assigned to seek out a Category 5, one of the worst hurricanes in Tampa history, out on a 20-foot sailboat in Tampa Harbor. God told me to come out here and get a boat. I came out here and got a boat. <laughs> everything that he's been telling me over the last two days is I'm doing the right thing. He's got my back. I'm in good shape. I ain't sweating it. Um, we're going to ride this one out. We got set up the way we know what we're doing. And as long as the water just keeps rising, we'll be fine. Will you be wearing a life jacket? No. <laughs> Are you going to be able to swim if it, if it need be? In circles. <laughs> <laughs> can you swim with one leg or what? Yeah, I can float like a, a champ, but swimming I just go in circles. So the plan's just to stick it out here? Yeah, I mean, it, the water's gonna come in, it's gonna rise. If you're on land, it's gonna flood, you're risking drowning. I'm in a boat, the boat goes up with the water. So even if the boat goes up 100 feet in the air, I'm gonna be up 100 feet in the air with the water. So it's really, the safest place in the world to be is on my boat, and I got room for one more female. <laughs> Give the people some words of wisdom out there. Um, just, you know what to do. Just be safe. Um, don't do. And we'll all be all right. We'll be here. You know, we'll be here tomorrow and the day after. Perfect, man. Let's go one day at a time. Let's do it. All right. So, Lieutenant Dan, the man of the hour, the man that the internet has decided to make a celebrity this week, I'm pretty sure he goes to Jesus Image Church. I can't confirm that. Okay, I can't confirm that. But he got a prophetic word from somewhere, apparently. He's saying that God said he wants him on the boat. Um, you know, absolutely lovable guy. Okay, everybody loves this guy. He's he's going to survive in his boat. He's talking about how he has room for a Proverbs 31. He's like, okay, give. he's like, I've got room for one female on the boat. I, lo I love it. I love it. I love his thought process here. Um, we have another clip we're going to go to. And um, I, let's just follow up with him. Someone came and confronted him about this whole thing and tried to, you know, help him because it is kind of a silly idea. Uh, let's go ahead and roll that clip. Reading the comments, yeah. and there was a guy, and he was telling a story in the Bible how there was a flood coming, and the guy, after the flood happened, he was like, God, why didn't you save me and everything? And he said, I sent three people, and you didn't come. What do you got to say to that comment? <clears throat> Somebody made that same exact thing to me this morning. God sent me here. He sent me here. He told me to come here. He told me to be right here for this. So I'm doing what he told me to do. So I know he didn't send nobody to get me out of here. And anybody that tries to get me out of here, they're not of God. Because God told me that this is where I'm supposed to be. And that's why I'm doing it. So, <laughs> and you're not worried at all and everything's going to be all right? I'm not worried because my life, this is nothing compared to what I've been through. So this doesn't scare me. Um, it's not even a minor inconvenience because all that's going to happen is everybody's going to get wet, but I'm going to be fine because I'm in a boat that floats. <laughs> Again, the water's on the outside. Now, the wind, yes, the wind's going to pick up, but my anchor is tied to the dock. I'm not going to go anywhere. You got this. So, it's all going to be good. I'm going to be all fine. Right, God's got Everyone's my plan for you. I love it. Um, you know, talking to him, I feel like, you know, this guy's trying to talk him out of riding the hurricane out in a boat. It sounds a little bit like the conversation you have when you're talking with your friend 
He's about to marry this girl and everyone's telling him not to marry her. And he's like, no, 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 you don't understand. I have a dream journal. God spoke to me. He told me to do this. I know there's obvious red flags and obvious reasons this shouldn't work, but you do, but no, no, you trust God's plan. Okay. He said to do it. Um, I love it. I love the confidence. I love the faith. He's going to ride out the boat. He's a funny guy. He's a funny guy. He's he, he's a lot of fun. He looks lovable. Let's go ahead and show um, the next picture. So Lieutenant Dan has been to jail 14 times. Um, he has a nice collection of mug shots. Um, you know, some people, you know, they look down on this. But I mean, what did he go to jail for? I looked at it. It looks like he went to jail for like some drug possession, maybe some aggravated battery. Look, look. OK, God, our, our God's a God of second chances. OK, let this man have his boat. Let this man be off the coast of Florida. It's entertaining to watch. We're seeing the TikToks. You know, does anyone care? I don't think a lot of people care. I don't care. Um, I just think it's funny. I'm just watching his clips. He's not hurting anybody on his boat. Um, so, you know, leave the man alone. Um, we have, you know, another thing that's a little bit interesting. Um, another clip on the same post. And, um, you know... It, it's how it is um, because he got this streaming career. Let me preface this with this. Um, right after this, he actually managed to land a streaming deal with Kick. Aiden Ross offered him, I think, $2 million and a brand new boat. They said, we're going to get you a boat upgrade. This one has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. We're going to get you a streaming setup. We want you to stream on Kick. He does his first stream on Kick after he has all this great success. He's blowing up on TikTok. Somebody raises $100,000 in a GoFundMe for him. He gets a $2 million deal. Do, do Lieutenant Dan can buy a new foot at this point if he wants to. Um, he does his first stream. I don't even think he was 10 minutes in. This is what happens. But you, if you want to get back into my good graces, it's, you're going to have to take time. Hey, a lot of work, and it's going to be hard. Because once I cut you off, you're done. Nigga. Sorry. <laughs> Dang. All right. I guess it is. You're done. Well, that happened. Um, you know, if you pay attention to most streamers' careers, okay, most of these big Twitch streamers, not Twitch stream. I mean, Twitch is yes, but just live streaming in general. I don't know what it is. I don't know why the process is like this, but the process usually goes, you know, they grind in silence for a few years. They have a big moment where they pop off. They get a lot of success and popularity, like Lieutenant Dan here. They get a, they get a streaming deal. They look at their streaming deal. Um, they get it and then they and then they say the N word and they mess it all up. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know why that is. And I don't know why, you know, some people are upset about it. I don't, you know, really. Um, <laughs> I don't know why we expected much from a guy with 14 mug shots who's living off of a boat off the coast of Florida. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. He had a nice run. OK, most people have that run in six years. He had it in like three weeks. Um, so, you know, I don't even know if it was three weeks, to be quite honest with you. Um, but in more dystopian news, um, Elon Musk at the Tesla We Robot event, he launched, um, they officially unveiled what they're calling the Optimus robot line. Let's go ahead and roll that clip. It's just a robot with arms and legs instead of a robot with, with wheels. <laughs> Look at that. They're beautiful. Uh, we've made a lot of progress. They're beautiful. If I was a mega church pastor, I would be putting in the first order on these. I would be putting in the first order on these as soon as possible. I would be replacing my intern team with these I would immediately. I would be having these robots. I would program these robots to immediately chant in unison, I don't have to do this. I get to do this. And I would put them to work in the lobby immediately. The coffee shop the merch store, all of it, okay? All of it, that's what I would do. Because these guys aren't gonna burn out as quickly, okay? There's no burnout with these guys. These guys aren't gonna turn around in three years and diss the church on X, okay? This is awesome. I love the humanoid robots. I don't wanna talk to them at McDonald's though. I will say that. I don't really wanna talk to them at McDonald's. If I pull up to McDonald's and I have to talk to one of these, I'm, I'm not gonna be happy. And all of a sudden I'm gonna be willing to vote to, to regulate this, okay? I'm an Elon Musk fanboy, I really am. I just I I just don't really want a soulless world, okay? So let's keep that in mind. I don't think that's his vision. Most people are talking about with these robots, you know, the, they're showing these other applications of it now, but you know, where it's going to roll out first is warehouses and factories and and uh, jobs that most people don't really want to do anyway. So that's okay. But look at it. Think about it. Imagine you pull up to your church nursery, you can leave your kids with the robots. You don't have to do background checks on these guys. No background checks necessary on these robots. You don't have to worry about anything. It'd be beautiful. It'd also be, you know, 
a little bit scary, but hey, it could be a good time. More news from Elon Musk, actually, something that could, I mean, honestly, this is huge news. I'm just going to be real with you. This is probably bigger news than anything else that's been in the news possibly this year, if you understand the full implications of this. They launched a major rocket, put it into space, brought it back in one, pay, in one piece, and essentially had it parallel park on a landing pad. Um, not even a landing pad. I mean, it's incredible. It's the whole booster. Just roll the clip. Landing burn has been ignited. We're now down to three Raptor engines. We can see those chopsticks now. Wow. That is nuts. We have successfully caught the super heavy booster back at the launch tower. Everybody's going nuts. Look at all those homeschoolers in the crowd going nuts. They're just losing they're just losing their minds. They're doing math calculations in their heads. It's beautiful. Well, for our audio listeners, for our audio listeners, I'll describe what just happened. Um, essentially, we watched the rocket launch into space. It's landing back. We're watching it land back. Um, it lands back in one piece. It doesn't catch on fire. And it didn't have to land on a traditional landing pad. It landed on this elevated pole thing. Such an absolute beautiful display of human ingenuity. Um, anybody that could be mad at SpaceX, I have no idea why. I have no idea why you could be upset about this. I love what J.D. Vance said the other day, actually. J.D. Vance, I believe, if I might be messing up his quote, I'm going to get it as good as I can. He said that the des I believe the destiny of this country is to conquer the stars. And I totally agree. We are America. We put the first man on the moon. Space is our thing. Other people are trying to do the space thing. They've never been able to do it. That is part of America's destiny. I truly believe it. Honestly, it's incredible. And I like it because I don't want to die on this planet with the rest of you. I'll be honest. I don't. You guys can die on Earth. That's fine. I'm dying on Mars. That's where I'm going to go. And you know what? If SpaceX doesn't work out, if, you know, something crazy happens and it just doesn't work, I'm going to get a bunch of, like, homeschooled nerds together. We'll figure it out. We'll rig up a Ford F-150 engine and we'll go to Mars. Okay? Don't worry about it because I don't want to die on this planet. Okay? I don't want to do it. It's it's absolutely beautiful. It's incredible. Um, you know, more on American ingenuity. Kamala Harris has plagiarized at least a dozen sections of her criminal justice book, Smart on Crime. According to a new investigation, the current vice president even lifted material from Wikipedia. Let's scroll down a little bit. Let's look at this. She ripped off the Associated Press. Here's Wikipedia. So let's read a section of Kamala Harris's book. The Midtown Community Court was established as a collaboration between the New York State Unfiled Court System unified court system, sorry, and the Center for Court Innovation. The court works in partnership with local residents, businesses, and social service agencies to organize community service projects and provide on-site <coughs> social services. I'm just going to read that part. Wikipedia says the Midtown Community Court was established as a collaboration between the New York State's unified court system and the Center for Court Innovation. The court works in partnership with local residences, businesses, and social service agencies to organize community in order to, to organize community service projects and provide on-site social services, including drug treatment, mental health counseling, and job training. So essentially, we see this whole paragraph. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it'll get boring, okay, if I'm just sitting and reading. Um, but we look at it. She plagiarized over 12 parts of her book, one part from Wikipedia. Um, you know, people are making a big deal about this on X. I'm not surprised. Have you guys read any popular books lately? Have you read any of these? First off, does anyone even read books anymore? Let's be honest. Who's reading books? It's me. I'm reading books. I like to read, but I don't see many people reading books. The truth is most books that you would buy these days is written by like 20 to 30 people. Okay. And, you know, I'll be honest. I, I look, I've done some college work. Okay. I always wrote my essays. My essays were written before the age of chat GPT, 
But if my essays, if I had Chad GPT, it would be tempting. Let's be honest, it'd be tempting. When have most of you not ripped off Wikipedia? <laughs> or at the very least, looked at Wikipedia and used it to help you find a source to quote. Um, you know, it's really interesting. This wouldn't fly, by the way, if you were actually going to college these days. A plagiarism check would catch this. Um, but this is a published book. I find it a little bit inspiring in a weird way, okay? You guys need to start blindly believing in yourself. If you blindly believed in yourself the way Kamala Harris does, you would accomplish great things, okay? Because on paper, it's like there's not much going for Kamala Harris. I'm sorry, there's not. On paper, there's just there's just not a lot here. But guess what? She had blind confidence. She did her thing, whatever she did to get to where she is. And now she's in the running for the presidency. Um, you guys should be doing the same thing. You should be looking at your projects like this, cutting corners, <laughs> having full confidence in yourself so much that you're willing to rip off Wikipedia. If you did that, you would at least be as successful as Kamala Harris. I'm just being honest. I'm giving unfiltered life advice right now. And by the way, I hate to say it. I hate to do it. If you go into most Christian book sections in this country, most of the leadership books you're going to pick up and self-help books in the Christian section you're going to pick up um, weren't really written by the authors that say they written. They were written by John Maxwell, okay? You can read it and then go find a John Maxwell book where John Maxwell said the same thing, probably first. I hate to say it, I'll say it. It's a reality, okay? It's a reality. At least Donald Trump didn't even pretend to write his own book. His book was written by someone else who followed him around New York for three weeks and then wrote it. Um, you know, if you're not gonna write your own book, that's fine. A book's a product, okay? It's a product, that's what it is. It's very sad that that's what books are these days, but it's a product. That's what it is. And, you know, I just think, I think more people should be trying things. <laughs> more people should be pursuing their dreams. And if that means even ripping off Wikipedia, if you have to, then you have to do it. Um, but I will not be reading um, Kamala Harris's book. I don't even know how someone found this. There's a reason this probably wasn't, this book was released 12 years ago. And there's a reason nobody figured it out till now because nobody cared until now. Um, you know, but it's interesting to see, okay? It's interesting to see Kamala Harris is not going to win the presidency. I don't think so. My gut says she's not going to win. You know, Donald Trump is winning by 20% according to the betting markets right now, which is crazy. They project a 20% chance over Kamala Harris that he wins. Um, so, you know, interesting things happening in the world today, okay? America is an interesting place. And, you know, it's just going to get crazier and crazier. People think we're, you know, something's going to happen. We're going to put the right person in the White House and then things are going to change. No, they're not going to change. We are in the collapse of the Roman Empire. We're right in the middle of it. I can pinpoint if you give, we went and got timelines out. I, we could figure out the exact moment where we are in the Roman Empire. And, you know, the Roman Empire, they couldn't plagiarize Wikipedia, um, but there was a lot of other things that were similar. If they could have, I'm sure their politicians would have done it as well. Um, so anyway, that's the news this week. Thank you guys for watching the show. If you want to get next week's show a day early um, and you want to get it without any promo, okay, for the future, be sure to check out Ransom Society. Um, link is in description. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Love you all. It's an interesting week. Watch out for those Tesla robots. You'll see them soon at your local mega church. They'll be there. Um, if I had, a, if I was pastoring one, I would have them. Um, so be on the lookout for that. I love you guys. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>